In this video, we'll be looking at the most commonly used tool for aggregating your raw data. And if you own a computer, you probably have access to it already, the pivot table. Hey everyone, and welcome to Vitamin BI, bringing you business intelligence for beginners and beyond. On this channel, we help you do more with your data, looking at things like data analysis and visualization, as well as BI platforms and how to choose the right one for you. So if you're new here, think about subscribing. And if you find this video useful, please feel free to like and comment. So let's jump into the video and look first at what a pivot table is and what it's designed to do. Here I have a data set in Excel of some dummy sales data in a rows and columns tabular format. It contains metrics and dimensions with a column for each. It's raw data, which is data at its most granular level, so not very useful to gain much in the way of insights from without aggregating and analyzing it first. Here's an example. I'd like to know what the total order quantity is for each of my sales regions. If I highlight my order quantity column and look down here at the bottom, I can see the sum of the values in this column. And if I apply a filter to the sales region column, I can select its different values to show just the rows for each region. Now, when I select the order quantity column, I can see the sum of the order quantity for just the east region. I can select a different region and get the sum for that also. I could do it for all four regions and note down what the sum for each was so I could create a chart of it, but that's not a very efficient way of doing what we want, which is where pivot tables come in. We use them to do the exact same thing but in a much simpler way. We can also go further than that with a pivot table, which we'll see in a minute, but first let's look at the different elements of a pivot table. There are four principal parts of a pivot table, values, rows, columns, and filters. Values are where you'll add your metrics. Adding data points to columns and rows will aggregate them and display them either horizontally or vertically. Then you have the filters, which will allow you to filter the result of your aggregation further. So how do we create one? First, we're going to need to choose the data that we want to aggregate. To do that, all we need to do is to click into a cell in your data and go to Insert and Pivot Table, which will bring up this box and you can see that Excel has automatically selected all the data in the sheet. You need to make sure there are no blank rows or columns in your data, otherwise Excel won't select any data beyond that empty space. We'll choose to insert the pivot table into a new sheet. And voila! On the right, we can see the areas for values, rows, columns, and filters, as well as a list here of all the fields or columns in our selected data. Let's create the example we talked about earlier. To see the sum of order quantity for each of our different regions, we'll start by adding the metric into values. And this gives the sum of our order quantity column like we saw when we selected it just before. Then we add our region dimension to rows and Excel does the rest. Simple. You now have the aggregated data that you can turn into a chart. To do that, all you do is go to insert and select your chart type. You can add more than one dimension to rows to show different levels of aggregation and more than one metric to values like this. You can see that the chart also updates at the same time. So what about columns and filters? Well, let's drag these out of the pivot table and get back to the original view of order quantity by region. What if I want to see the result broken down by customer segment? When I add it to columns, that's exactly what happens and again, the chart auto updates. Finally, what about filters? Let's say we just wanted to see the result for one particular year, 2017. By adding our ship date to filters, we then get this drop down menu over our result, which we can click on to select the values we want to filter by. So there you have a basic introduction to pivot tables in Excel, perhaps not as complicated as you might have thought. To build up a dashboard in Excel, you'd need to create different pivot tables for different charts. 
As long as you make sure the pivot table is pointed at the right range of data, the charts will update themselves as the data is updated in that range. And there you have it, a brief introduction to pivot tables and how you can use them to aggregate your data. That's it from me for now. Until the next time, don't forget to subscribe and stay BI curious.